Hello, mathematicians. Welcome to math class with me, Miss Taylor. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for coming. Thank you. You, you do. All right. Thanks for coming, everyone. So let's see, are we ready for math? Let's check to see if we have all of our math materials. Very prudent to make sure we're ready to go. Do we have our fact practice packet? Hmm. I've got mine. Here it is. So our fact practice packet. Do you have your textbook? Got mine over there. There it is, my textbook. Do you have your workbook? There's mine. Paper or whiteboard and a pencil. Need, need a pencil. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of work today on my whiteboard, so you might want to get your whiteboard. If you need any of these things, please pause the video and go and get them and come right back. All right. So let's see. Today, um, there's a note. Sometimes we use our place value chart, but today we're not going to be using our place value chart, but there is something else that would be prudent for you to have, and that is your steps to solve word problems. Today, we're going to be practicing solving word problems that are related to division. So we have some division word problems we're going to work on, and we're going to solve those. And we're going to think about how following all these steps, doing it step by step, can really help us to understand the problem and kind of break down, um, break it down into pieces that we can understand. And also thinking about why is it a wise idea? Why is it prudent to draw unit bars? So we'll think about that today. So if you do not have your little poster about how do I solve a word problem, please pause the video. Go and get that. Alrighty, so. We always start with our fact practice. So let's see. And this is, we are in our fact practice packet number four. And today we are going to be working on page 14. And on page 14, we are going to do a little skip counting. And skip counting is something that really helps us with multiplication. Also addition and division. And they're kind of all related. And when we do a little bit of fact practice at the beginning, it helps our, our brains to get kind of warmed up to get us into math mode. So um, I put the date up here at the top. Today is Thursday. It is January 22nd. And once again, we are on page 14 in our fact practice packets. So you will notice that we are, it says complete the skip counting series, and we are adding three. So these are kind of some regular number patterns where each time we move from the left side to the right side, we're adding three. So 11 plus three is 14, 14 plus three is 17, 17 plus three is 20. All right, so, and then we can continue, we can complete the regular number pattern. So let's try this one. So we know 16 plus three is 19. And if you want to draw the arrows and write the rule down below, you can, but this whole page is adding three, so. You might not need to do that. All right, I know 19 plus three is 22. Let's see, 22 plus three. Did you say 25? 25 plus three. 28. Hmm, well now we can check our work to see if we've made any mistakes here. 28 plus three, is that 31? Mm-hmm, 31 plus three. And then 34 plus three, yep. So I've put in a few answers here so that we can check and see if we've made any mistakes because sometimes that does happen for sure, right? And is it okay to make mistakes? Of course. The important thing is that we fix them and we learn from our mistakes. So why don't you go ahead, you're gonna complete the fact practice. You're gonna do this um, skip counting by threes. I did want to draw your attention to one down here at the bottom where we have, these are the actual multiples of three. When we multiply by three, three times one is three, three times two is six, three times three is nine, three times four is 12. Now second graders, don't panic. We haven't memorized our skip counting and our multiplying by three yet. That we will do in the future soon very soon so that will be fun we'll we'll do a little bit of memorizing 12 plus 3 hmm is that 15 15 plus 3 
18 plus 3. 20, 21. Plus 3. All right. And remember, second graders, after you do a few of these, it is a prudent idea to check the back. On the back, we have our answers. And that is really good for our brains to check our work right away. And then if we are making a mistake, we don't have to do the whole page and then realize, oh man, I did it wrong. So we can kind of check, let's see, did I do this correctly? And we can check on the back side. So that is really good for our brains to get that immediate feedback. Like, am I on the right track? Is this what we're, is this what I'm working on? Yep. All right, so that is our fact practice for today. If you want to finish it right now, you can pause the video. Otherwise you can finish this a little bit later. But we are going to move on to our textbook work. And in our textbook for today, we are looking at page 100. There we are. We're on page 100. And like I mentioned, we are going to practice solving some word problems about division. All right. So I've got my little bookmark here. I like to use this as sort of a little bookmark. And we are going to solve some word problems. So. You will notice on page 100 that they have been nice enough to give us pictures, haven't they? They've given us pictures for these word problems. But what we're going to work about, what we're going to think about is that sometimes they don't give us pictures. And if they don't give us pictures, what can we do? We just give up. We run away. Ah, I can't do it. No, no, no. We can draw our own pictures, which is exactly what the unit bar is. It's just kind of a picture. And we'll we'll uh, we'll talk about what that's going to look like. So, I'm going to get a whiteboard so I can do a little bit of practice on my whiteboard. You can use paper or pencil, um, but I think it's more fun to use a whiteboard. So, alrighty. So let's take a look at number one. And I should mention that I am sitting at a desk. Uh, make sure you're at a desk or kind of a flat area. If you are on your bed or some somewhere that's not. Um, such a good place for you to be um, doing your work. You might want to change where you are. I should have said that before, but um, all right, so here we go. Number one, it says share 12 oranges equally among two children. How many oranges does each child get? Mm, all right, now you might be thinking, Miss mm, Taylor, this one is not too tricky. Don't worry, they're going to get harder. They'll give us more of a challenge. So let's take a look at the first thing we do with word problems. We read the problem. Do we read it? Yep. We underline the question. Now this is in our textbook, so we're not actually going to underline it. Let's use our finger. There it is. All right, let's write an answer sentence. And we're going to leave a blank for the answer. Ooh, and this is something that we are going to start working on next week in writing class is writing complete sentence answers. So this will be a really good connection for us. We're going to work on writing complete sentence answers. So here is our question. How many oranges does each child get? Now when we're writing an answer sentence, we don't need to use our question words, how many. Um, but let's see, can we use some of these other words from the question? How many oranges does each child get? Hmm. Think about how we would turn that into a sentence, an answer sentence. Yeah, so we are going to, whoops, I want to zoom in, I want to zoom out. So um, we're going to say each, each child gets blank, we're going to leave our blank for the answer. How many oranges does each child get? Each child gets blank oranges. Oranges. That's how I remember how to spell it. it. Looks like oranges. Okay. I've got my capital letter. I've got my end mark. I've tried to use as many words from the question as I can in my answer. Being very thorough, very prudent. All right. So we've got our answer sentence. Next. Let's see. We need to identify the who and or the what. All right, and before we do that, sometimes we like to draw these two lines to help us remember that we should have something here, something here, and something here. So you can draw your two lines there. Let's see, our who and our what. Mm, who, let's see, we've got some children, and there are some oranges. So 
we could say children's apostrophe s oranges. So we are we are talking about the children's oranges. All right. We've identified our who and or what. Next step is to draw a unit bar. And we know that a unit bar is just a fancy name for a rectangle. Let's draw a rectangle. There we go. Now we must gather our fortitude. This step is a little bit a little bit harder. It's got like four things for us to do. Whew. Mm -hmm, I can do it. We're gonna reread the problem. Then we're gonna adjust and chunk the unit bar. And that means make it bigger or smaller and then kind of cut it into pieces. Then we're gonna fill in the information. We're at a question mark for the unknown. Ooh, that's a lot of stuff to do. So we're gonna reread the problem. Share 12 oranges equally among two children. How many oranges does each child get? Okay, so let's see. I'm going to think about my unit bar. So they've given us the whole number, haven't they? There's 12 oranges to begin with. That is our whole number. So our whole number when we make a unit bar is it either goes in the top or the bottom. We write a number 12. And we are going to share 12 oranges equally among two children. So that means that our unit bar is going to get two chunks. So here's the oranges for one child and here's the oranges for the other. Then we write our little question mark. And for multiplication and division, sometimes we have more than one question mark. Um, you might be thinking, well, why do we have more than one? Why do you think we have more than one question mark? Hmm. Yeah, because we need to know how many oranges is this child going to get and this child. But whenever we multiply and divide, remember the groups must be equal. Yes. And it's kind of a clue for us that we're going to divide because they give us the whole number. And we know that when we divide, we have to start with the whole number. It's kind of like when we subtract. We're, they always give us the whole number. All right. So here's our 12. And we're going to do divided by 2. We're going to share 12 oranges equally. And you can see they've kind of given us a picture here to help us. But again, if they didn't give us this picture here, hmm. Could we draw our own picture to solve this? Yeah. All right. So let's see. Next step is step five, to work your computation. And that means add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Now, if they've given us the whole number and we know that we're sharing equally, we can divide 12 divided by 2 there's two equal parts, equals, hmm, let's see. Well, I can think about two numbers that I know that add up to 12, two of the same numbers. Or I can also think about, well, what number times two equals 12? Because multiplication and division work together that way. They're called inverse operations. That's a fancy word for opposites. Inverse. All right, so 12 divided by two Hmm, well, I know that 6 plus 6 is 12. So I know 6 times 2 is 12. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. And then what we do is we come over here, step 6. We're going to fill in our answer, check to make sure it makes sense. We'll cross that off there. Let's see, would that make sense? Hmm, let me put it in here and we'll, we'll read our answer sentence. Each child gets six oranges. I think that would make sense. Six oranges for this child and six for that. And there's 12 total. Yeah, and that makes sense. So, nice work, students. Let's try another one. In fact, let's skip down to this one. I think this one maybe might be the most interesting one. Number four. And number four, let's see. Number four is about someone named Lauren. Oops, Taylor's lights went out. But I'm going to pretend that it is a student in our class because that would be a little more interesting for us. So, whoops. I, yeah. all right, turn my lights back on. There we go. Okay. So, second graders, we're going to look at number four. 
and we'll do one more together and then we'll look at what our homework is for today. But I thought it would be fun, instead of Lauren, I have a little piece of paper here. I'm going to stick this and we're going to pretend that this one is about a student in our class, Ari. Hi, Ari. How are you today? Hmm. All right. So now, of course, I'm not going to write in my textbook. I have a little piece of paper here. So we're going to pretend that Ari makes 28 cakes. She wants to put four cakes in each box. How many boxes does she need? Hmm. Well, let's find out. So we're going to read the problem. Did that. Underline the question. All right. So let's use our finger to underline. There we go. Then we're going to write an answer sentence and leave a blank for the answer. So how many boxes does she need? How many boxes does she need? So to make our answer sentence, we're going to write she, capital letter, she needs blank boxes. And of course, we'll have our end mark. I like to circle it to make sure I have it. She needs blank boxes. Alrighty, let's see. We are going to identify the who and or the what. So this question is about Ari. Oh, let's do our two lines to separate. So we know we should have something in each section in each little part. Ari apostrophe S, so something belongs to Ari, and it's Ari's cakes. Mmm. Yum, yum. Ari, do you like to make cakes? Like little cupcakes, actually. <laughs> All right, so there is our who and our what. It's about Ari's cake. Next step is to draw our unit bar. Fancy name for a rectangle. Here we go. There's our rectangle. No, it's step four. We've got to gather a little bit of fortitude for this one. We're going to reread the problem, adjust and chunk our unit bar, fill in the information, and write a question mark for the unknown. Whew. All right. So, and we're thinking about have they given us the whole number? Have they given us the parts? Ari makes 28 cakes. She wants to put four cakes in each box. How many boxes does she need? Hmm. So I'm seeing this number 28. Is that one of the parts or is that a whole number? Ari makes 28 cakes. Kind of seems like she made this many all together and then she's putting four cakes in each box as in like this is one box and that's another box and that's another box. So I'm thinking this 28 must be our whole number. And our whole number goes above or below the unit bar. And we know that she wants to put four cakes in each box. Hmm. So this one, let's see, I'm going to make four chunks here. Four chunks. No, let's see. Is that correct? Do I put four chunks? Hmm. Wait a second. She wants to put four cakes in each box. Oh, but this one looks like she wants to put, she wants to divide the, the cakes into four equal boxes. So actually, I think Taylor made a little mistake there. Did you notice that? Now this, this kind of problem is a little different, it's a little more tricky, because she wants to put four cakes in each box. So they are telling us we know how many cakes are in each box. What we don't know is how many boxes. So how we draw that in our unit bar, we are at four and four, and then we try to see how many fours we can fit into 28. So why don't we do some skip counting? Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, oh no, I've run out of space. This is what you do, you just make your unit bar a little bit longer. 28, so that's how we do that. And then our question mark is, we kind of already figured it out how many, how many boxes we need. So when we work our computation, 
we have our whole number 28 divided by 4 equals now wait a second what's the answer hmm is it 4 hmm 28 divided by remember this means there's 4 in each group if we look at the picture we can see oh here's 4 in each group 4 4 4 hmm so what are we trying to find Oh yeah, let's look down here. How many boxes? In other words, how many little groups of four? How many little chunks of four? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our answer is how many boxes? In other words, how many of these little chunks? Let's see, if I go back and cross this off. Seven, are there seven chunks? I think so. She needs seven boxes. Alrighty. Let's make sure that our answer makes sense. That is our last step. Here we go. Fill in your answer. Check to make sure it makes sense. Check. Hmm. Ari, do you need seven boxes? I think so. All right. Nice job, scholars. Let's take a look at our homework for today. And our homework for today is... Workbook pages 109 to 110. So, make sure Ms. Taylor has the right workbook. Here we go. And let's take a look at 109. And on page 109, we're going to continue solving some word problems. But the challenging part is that I would like you to please try to draw some unit bars. Now you might be thinking, well, Miss Taylor, where can I draw unit bars? Hmm. So here's page 109. Hmm. Hmm. Does anyone see any space? What they do? Yeah, over here to the side. So you can draw your unit bar over here to the side. And anytime you do any extra work or computation, your teachers love to see your thinking. So I know I had one student who asked me, Miss Taylor, if I do some work over here, should I erase it? And I said, no, don't erase it. I love to see what my students are thinking. And that way we can help each other if we, if we write down our thinking and we can say, oh, and also we can catch our own mistakes and we can look back and say, oh, I think I see where I made my mistake. So if you wanted to, to help you remember that I would like you to try unit bars, you could go ahead right now and draw your little rectangles, draw your unit bars. Okay, and for this one, I'm gonna help you get started. 32 is our whole number. There it is. All right, so second graders, you are going to complete pages 109 to 110. And your challenge is to try to draw some unit bars. And again, I know they've given us the picture, but this is really gonna help us if we can understand how to draw unit bars, then when they take the picture away from us, when they don't give us a picture, we don't need to panic because we already know how to draw our own picture with a unit bar. Alrighty, students, so that is it for today's math lesson. We have done our fact practice packet. We have done a little practice in our textbook with word problems. Now we are doing our homework in our workbook and we are thinking about why unit bars can kind of help us um, understand the problem. So have a wonderful rest of your day, mathematicians, and I will see you again soon. Bye.